It happens to all but the luckiest of us, a stretch of cloudy nights. Day after day, sometimes week after week, the clouds stretch on. It's enough to make you lose heart or lose your mind, throw in the towel, sell your equipment, and take up a hobby that doesn't rely so much on the weather. But before you do anything too drastic, here are some tips on how to pass those seemingly endless cloudy nights. You can sharpen your skills, plan your imaging, so that when the clear skies do inevitably return, you'll be ready, you'll be refreshed, and more prepared than ever to collect more photons. Cloudy nights are a perfect opportunity to revisit old data. You might be surprised at just how much you've learned about processing since you last imaged a particular object. When the clouds keep you from getting new data, try to get a whole new look out of the data you already have. Try some new processing approaches and look at old data with fresh eyes and more knowledge and see what results you can get. There's always something new to learn with astrophotography. And in no area is that more the case than with image processing. I often use a cloudy night as a chance to watch some videos, maybe read an online tutorial, or crack open an astrophotography book to learn more about a new PixInsight process or the latest version of StarNet. If you're a PixInsight user, I highly recommend the Astrophotography Manual by Chris Woodhouse. The first half covers really every aspect of the hobby, and the second half is a deep dive into PixInsight. The Deep Sky Imaging Primer by Charles Bracken is another must-have. It's got great walkthroughs for PixInsight, along with processing examples in Photoshop. Being prepared for the next clear night is a huge bonus. And with a cloudy night, you've got the time to do it. Research new targets that you haven't attempted before. You can look on places like Astrobin for familiar setups to yours and how other astrophotographers achieved the results that you're looking for. You can plan out a month or a whole season of objects that you want to get to, adding in target integration times and rise and set times to make the most of a clear night. A couple of books I used for this are The 100 Best Astrophotography Targets, which gives descriptions of objects and it's organized by time of year. Also, the Astrophotography Sky Atlas. Unlike other star charts that are more for visual astronomy, this specializes in astrophotography. It has color coding by object type and brightness. The more you can plan ahead, the more successful your next clear night can be. If you're looking for something astrophotography related that you can accomplish while doing something else, think about making a dark frame library or updating your old one. I've got a whole video on how to do this. It's a really simple thing to set up and run, and you can even allow it to run while you're doing literally anything else. And something I've learned about myself is that I generally am more excited, more naturally motivated to do things related to astrophotography when the skies are clear. Sure, that's the only time I can go out and set up and actually get some images, but I'm also more excited about finding new objects or doing image processing or learning new techniques when the skies are clear, when the photons are pouring in, even though I'm generally more busy during those times and certainly more sleep deprived than I am when I have long stretches of cloudy nights. When the skies are cloudy, especially for weeks on end, I tend to lose that motivation. Maybe I get discouraged and I just don't feel like pursuing the hobby as much as I can during some of those long stretches. So while I certainly wouldn't recommend spending every cloudy night not thinking about astrophotography, those are, after all, key times when you can be sharpening your skills and planning out imaging sessions. If you are feeling a little bit burnt out by it, if it's feeling like more of a chore than a hobby, Give yourself permission just to step away. Maybe for a night, maybe for a weekend, maybe for a whole week, whatever you might need to get that time away, take the pressure off yourself a little bit, and then come back refreshed and ready to go when those clear skies do return. This is, after all, a hobby for most of us. It doesn't have to be something that we're constantly pushing ourselves on. Those seasons are good, but it's also important to give ourselves distance from it, to step away for a bit, and then come back and be refreshed and ready to go. So I'm curious, how do you spend your cloudy nights? What's the longest amount of time you've gone without a good imaging night? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video useful, definitely give it a like. It's gonna help others find it 
as well. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Plenty of great content coming up, uh, clear skies or not. So we'll see you next time.